It's Good Friday, and this is Ram View. Oh, Live from the studios of the Ram Cave in the home of the camellias, I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is Ram View, the March 29th, 2024 edition, brought to you by Kistler Law Firm. Injured in an auto accident, need help, got questions, call Kistler Law at 661-206-6990. That's Kistler Law at 661-206-6990. And Check out KisslerLawFirm.com. That's one word, KisslerLawFirm.com. Kissler Law, they've been fighting for you since 92. And by Temple City Auto Repair. Having some auto issues? Get yourself some John and Henry at TempleCityAutoRepair.com. And, of course, by Granite Ridge Christian Camp, a place where your life can change. Okay, we are coming into the last weekend. Monday will be April and uh, or March 32nd, depending on where you went to school. And uh, we'll be inside less than a month away from uh, the, the NFL draft and everyone's going to be talking and chanting and everything's going to be going crazy between now and then because now our mock drafts have to get a little bit better, a little more zeroed in because uh, the heavy part of the free agency period is, is done. Uh, you know, people have left, gone on. Uh, salary cap cuts have been made. And so now you have a general idea of what your uh, team needs. So uh, I don't think I've posted a mock for a while. I think I horsed around with one. I can't remember. There are so many. Uh, but uh, I was messing around and I posted on on Twitter or X or Twix uh, in response to uh, a guy that I'm connected with on Twitter. His name is Brian Geno. He's a huge Ram fan. And he just did a crazy mock draft just to see what would happen. So I decided I'm just going to do a madman mock. I'm calling this my madman mock number one uh, and uh, just to see what I can do, how you can change things. And uh, there's part of me that, that believes two things because people are saying, what are the Rams going to do? And I think one of the guys online was saying, just take a shot at it, Joe. What, what are you going to say? So I, I still I still think the Rams could make a deal for a guy like Josh Allen. I do. Because every other thing they've touched, they've touched everything else they've needed. Uh, and uh, you could always load up on DTs in the draft. You know, you're not going to replace Aaron Donald. We everyone, you know, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but they do need an edge rusher, right? They do need an edge rusher. You need some compliments around Kobe Turner, but we need an edge rusher or the Rams need an edge rusher. And so it's, it's just um, – how is this going to play out, right? So I can see the Rams dealing a number one this year and something else uh, for for Josh Allen. I, I don't know. I just see it. Now I know we got salary cap issues, but we also know <laughs> salary cap is just it's just one hurdle that they go through and they make it work. So that's in the back of my head. But what's also in the back of my head is the Rams trading back and loading up with picks in the first 100. So my goal was to get to six draft picks in the first 100 of the draft. And so, at, uh, and I just ran a NFL draft, a database mock draft. Uh, it's kind of random. Uh, and so uh, at number 19, the, the computer representing the Vikings had the Vikings approach me to deal uh, the night for the 19th pick. So I gave the Vikings the 19th pick and they gave me their 23rd, 108th and 157th overall. Not bad. So I got stuff to deal with. And then at 23, the 49ers, uh, through the, the the AI there or whatever, uh, approached me about trading from 31 to 23. Now, I'm loath to deal with any teams uh, in our division with a draft, or even if it's a mock draft. But since this is a madman mock, uh, I took the deal. And so the 49ers uh, took pick number 23, and I moved back to number 31, and I picked up the 63rd pick in the draft and then a couple of fourth rounders, 124 and 135, as well as a seventh round or a sixth rounder at 215. So at number 31, I drafted Troy Fatanau, the left tackle from uh, Washington. As we know, the Rams interviewed him recently. So I thought, hey, that's a safe bet. Let me let me throw that one in there. Uh, 
And then I, in the process of wanting to get another pick in the top 100, I took those fourth round picks, 124, 135, and then fifth round picks, uh, 154, and a sixth at 196. I sent those four picks to the Ravens for pick 93. Uh, and then as my position came up in the draft again at number 52, I took Washington uh, edge rusher Braylon Trice. Uh, just knowing that it takes a while for an edge rusher to develop, but I took him uh, and uh, and so hit a couple of needs there, got, got the edge guy. At number 63, I took Roman Wilson, wide receiver, Michigan. Uh, Rams have interviewed Fontenau, the tackle. They've interviewed Trice, and they've interviewed Roman Wilson. At number 65, I felt a, uh, a luxury here, and I diverted. I didn't go for a DT. I drafted Jonathan Brooks, running back out of Texas, a uh, talented guy, and just thought he could add some uh, dynamics to the Rams' offense. Um, God bless Ronnie Rivers, but uh, – we could go get something a little bit better to back up Kyrene for the next couple years. At number 99, I took Kyrie Jackson corner from Oregon. At number 108, I took Jalen Ford linebacker, Texas. Uh, the Rams have interviewed him. At number 55, uh, I drafted Justin uh, Ibogubi, the defensive tackle from Alabama. And at 157, I drafted Gabe Hall, defensive tackle from Baylor. So with those two guys, along with Kobe Turner, along with Bobby Brown, along with DeWan Johnson uh, and Laurel Merchinson, I thought that gives the Rams some opportunity to develop. And there is nothing on the free agent market that's going to make anything better right now for the Rams at DT, at least until Aaron Donald decides he wants to come back midseason. Right? At number 209, I went with a reach that somebody else had. Jalex Hunt, uh, Edge, uh, Houston Baptist. Somebody had the Rams taking him at 83 overall. That's crazy. In the sixth round, Jalex Hunt makes sense. And so I took him out of Houston Baptist there. At number 213, I took Joshua Cardi, the kicker from Stanford. That makes everybody happy. At number 215, I took Dallin Holker, tight end, Colorado State. Rams are going to need some depth there. Number 217, I took Joe Milton, quarterback, Tennessee. I thought that was pretty good value, and he could um, he could uh, battle Stetson Bennett for that third quarterback spot. And then at number 54, 254, I took Garrett Greenfield, tackle South Dakota State. That really left me like 14 draft picks. I, I don't know if the Rams want to draft 14 players this year, but I did want to get to six picks inside the top 100. So that's my madman draft. Um, leaned heavily uh, on players the Rams had interviewed. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see. Those things are fun. I, I, I'm curious to see yours, right? Curious to see yours. <coughs> things are a little slow right now in terms of happening and stuff. So players are having their pro days, and you're hearing, uh, you're hearing about pro days. You hear uh, some of them are looking really good. Drake May had his. Michael Penix had his. Jaden Daniels had his. All these guys are in their pro days. And so there's not a lot of movement right now. So I was looking at something here. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a player we're going to talk about today from the 1940s. His name's Jim Benton. But one of the things I remember as I looked this up, and I think I shared this a year ago, you know, there's a really strange trend. The Rams have won four titles. They've won, uh, they've won uh, one in Cleveland. Uh, one in Los, two in Los Angeles, and one in St. Louis. In 45, they were in Cleveland. That was a title game against the Redskins. And the Rams were trailing 7-2 to two in the second quarter of that game. And uh, Jim Benton, the wide receiver, caught a 37-yard touchdown pass from Bob Waterfield to put the Rams ahead 9-7 uh, to seven in the second quarter. And the Rams ultimately went on to win 15-14. They never trailed again, so technically you can call the pass to Benton a game winner. In 1951, uh, the Rams and Browns played, um, and uh, it was at the Coliseum, and this was that powerful Rams team, and the game was tied 17-17, and Tom Fears caught a 73-yard touchdown pass from Norm Brocklin in the fourth quarter that turned into a 24-17 game winner, right? Okay. Title game, 1999, Super Bowl, the game is tied 16-16, Isaac Bruce catches a 73-yard touchdown pass from Kurt Warner in the in the Super Bowl in the fourth quarter, and uh, it proves to be the game winner, 23-16. And then uh, in 2021, title game versus the Bengals, 
Rams are trailing late in the fourth quarter. Cooper Cup catches a one-yard touchdown pass from Matthew Stafford. So in each one of these Rams titles, uh, there was a big play that either put them ahead or was late in the fourth quarter, broke open a tie game, or put them over the top. I thought that was pretty interesting. The other thing that was pretty interesting about this is Waterfield, Van Brocklin, and Warner are all Hall of Famers. And uh, it's a safe bet, I think, Matthew Stafford's going to end up in the Hall of Fame. Just uh, looking at some Ram stuff there. Uh, happy to get to questions, guys. I know I'm on early today. I did put out a little Rams reminder, uh, but we're going to get to questions right here. We're co coming up to the break. I promise I'll answer anything you guys have, so fire them at me, uh, even if you hate my mock draft. Uh, draft order for the Rams, again, just making sure that's all out there. Rams have picks 19, 52, 83, and 99. That's four picks in the first 100. Uh, then no picks in the fourth round, and then you got in the fifth round 154, 155, and then you get in the sixth 189, 209, 213, 217, and then 254 in the seventh round. Around the NFL <coughs> and other places, the Eagles have traded Hassan Reddick to the Jets uh, for a conditional third. Uh, Reddick wanted out of Philly. They gave him permission to seek a deal. And, um, you know, there was a lot of heat there. We saw a lot of stuff on the boards that the Rams should go after him. I was really into Hassan Reddick after 2020 because I thought he was a low-profile free agent. Uh, he was a first-round draft pick of the Cardinals in 2017, 13th overall out of Temple, right? In his first three seasons, Reddick had combined seven and a half sacks and only started 20 games in his first three seasons. Then in 2020, it came together for him. And uh, and he started 11 games, and he picked up 12 sacks. Arizona didn't re-sign him. He went to Carolina and then later to Philly for the last uh, two years. And I thought he would have been a perfect signing for the Rams after the 2020 season. I remember we were just kind of starting the show, and uh, and you know you never heard any buzz from the Rams camp about looking at Hassan Reddick. And since then, you didn't hear any real buzz. It was more fandom that was thinking Hassan Reddick. And, uh, and so I just didn't think the Rams were going to go after him. I, I just, I didn't think the Rams were into him. So I didn't think it was a possibility that they would go after him. And now he's gone to the Jets, which is interesting because the Jets lost Bryce Huff uh, with a $51 million contract to the Eagles, right? But when you look at uh, Reddick's uh, career, it took him three years. First round, 13th overall, edge guy, took him three years to develop into uh, an exceptional pass rusher. And again, just something to think about when you're going to draft an edge guy. Okay. Michael Penix had a huge pro day, huge pro day, and is drifting back towards the first round. Penix, by early week of February, by Super Bowl time, people were already moving him out of the first round. He was second round. We, we, we did a, saw a mock draft last week that had him going at number 44. I'll be honest with you, the mock draft I did today had him available at number 52. I thought that was a little too madman for me, so I didn't do it. But um, there's a lot of projections right now that Michael Penix, after a great pro day, you know, again, got some great receivers there, uh, there's a chance here that he could go in the first round. And, you know, what do you do, right? What do you do uh, if you have a uh, – have a first round quarterback, right? What do you do? I mean, you can see the Rams drafting him. I'm just throwing it out there. You can see the Rams draft. If he's at 19, uh, there's another quarterback that's being slated to the Rams. We're going to look at Charles Davis's mock draft here and on the other side of the break. But if the Rams had a chance to take Michael Penix at number 19, um, I'm sure they would talk to Matthew Stafford. But you know, you're not going to pay Penix anything for a couple of years. He sits around for a couple of years, learns. Um, uh, Stafford's system, not Stafford, McVay's system. And then uh, by the time we're ready to move on from Stafford, the Rams have a guy that's relatively cheap and something to think about extends your Super Bowl window, right? Your Super Bowl window gets extended if you've got a frontline quarterback, but no one ever really knows about these guys. But, you know, if he's there, you, you got a dream, right? You got a dream. Uh, former Rams safety Cody Davis retires. Does anyone remember Cody Davis? He was an undrafted free agent, wore number 35 or 38, I think. Spent five seasons with the Rams. Most of those years were in St. Louis. I think he spent two years here in L.A. Uh, he was number 38, that's right, 2013 through 2017. 
He appeared in 65 games for the Rams, started five. He was mostly a special teamer, picked off a couple passes, and then left as a free agent after the 2017 season, uh, and then spent the last four in New England. Well, he announced his retirement today, and that's pretty good for an undrafted free agent, right, to get 12 years in the league, or thir- uh, I'm sorry, 11 years in the league, 2013 through 2023. And he had almost slipped my mind. At first, I'm like, Cody Davis, Cody. And I go, Cody Davis, that was the guy that was with the Rams. So he retired. NFL schedule likely to be released the second week of May. We know who the Rams are playing. Teams know who they'll be playing next year. But in what order, which is a huge deal, uh, you know, you don't want to go to um, New England uh, in late December, so to speak, right? You you, uh, you, you kind of like to get some of those games uh, in New York, right? front loaded into into September. The good news is we know this year Green Bay will finally have to come to SoFi. Rams will be playing Green Bay for like the fifth consecutive season, but at least this time it'll be in SoFi. The 49ers are having some uh, awkward moments right now with Brandon Ayuk. Uh, I think, you know, I I couldn't be more thrilled that they're having awkward moments with Brandon Ayuk. Uh, He wants his contract redone. He's really good. But my thing is, I don't think he appreciates where he's at and he wants his money. uh, And uh, and uh, and, you know, I I don't know if he appreciates he's in a unique place that he has a chance to maybe get to a Super Bowl, maybe. Right. But he wants his dough. And Uh, I get nowhere unless the team wins. Right. Ayuk doesn't get anywhere unless the team wins. He's a receiver, and if you're a receiver nowadays, you better be transcendent because there are 10 to 12 guys minimum coming into the league every year at his position. A lot of those guys that used to play running back, I got to believe their their coaches now are telling them, if you got the hands, move to receiver, move to receiver, because that's where the mamu is. That's where you're going to get the dough. And, uh, and so at his position every year, there's a glut. And here's something to think about too. Um, note, the Chiefs won Super Bowl 57, with Isaiah Pacheco, a seventh-round running back, right? Note, the Chiefs won Super Bowl 58, beat the 49ers with Marquez Valdez-Scantling, McCole Hardman, game winner, and Justin Watson, and a second-round pick in his rookie year, Rasheed Rice, right? If you go into that game, you're going to say, you know, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle are kind of a wash, but you're going to look at Ayuk and Debo Samuel, and you're going to say, oh, 49ers definitely have the advantage at receiver, but you know what? You could have the best receiver. <laughs> it's, it's you know, you, you, these are competent guys. Valdez, Scanley, McCole Hardman, Justin Watson, Rasheed Rice is going to be pretty good. Uh, and you want a Super Bowl. You know, a great receiver is nice, but good ones these days grow on trees. You, you follow me on that? A great receiver is nice, but good ones grow on trees. That's why I don't think I would want Marvin Harrison, if I'm the Cardinals, I'd want to trade out and I know I can get another receiver a few spots back. That's very good. He might not be Marvin Harrison, but I can get him. I can get a Romo Dunze uh, or a Brian Thomas or a Malik neighbors. I can get someone like that and also pick up some other help for my team. Uh, and I just, again, I don't think Brandon Ayuk gets where he's at. Uh, he, uh, He's definitely not a great receiver. He's very, very good. And uh, I just wouldn't pay him. I just wouldn't pay a receiver huge money anymore because if you're scouting well and you see what's coming into the league, you know that's where it's at. You're going to replace these guys. I got a feeling that receiver bubble is going to burst sometime soon. Real quick here, I wanted to touch base with the Chargers because people seem to have some interest. Uh, Chargers, uh, according to Vegas, are projected to eight and a half wins in 2024. I don't think nine wins is unattainable. Uh, uh, They've got their quarterback. They've got their edge rushers. uh, And I think they should probably think about trading back because uh, unless they go after Joe Alt at number five, they should think about trading back and just loading up even more. Uh, Chargers, again, first time. I can't remember the last time I was interested in the Chargers. uh, And uh, I am interested in the Chargers right now. Okay, my name is Joe Tarosian. I was a sports writer for 21 years, and uh, now I do RamView, and uh, I also do um, write books, and my books and RamView keep me going in my day job. I pastor a small church in Burbank called Burbank Faith Nazarene. Also, we have our Burbank Faith Virtual channel right here on YouTube that you can check out and hit the subscribe button too. 
and BurbankFaithVirtual.com and all across social media. And that's the reason I'm on early today. It is Good Friday. Uh, usually, usually I don't work on too much on Good Friday, but I've been asked to speak uh, at a, at a congregate. One of our congregations, our Spanish congregation has asked me to speak. So that's why I'm on two hours earlier. I think we found a rhythm there at five o'clock and I'm going to try to keep it as long as I can. Uh, but let's look at some questions. I think I got a couple out there. Bill is with us. Tim Burns. Uh, let's see what we got. Uh, Bill, Reddick, Reddick traded to the Jets. Where does that leave the Rams at edge? <laughs> uh, I think I might have answered that, Bill. Um, I, I do think uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I just wouldn't if the Rams made a deal with their number one pick and went out and got an edge player. You know, maybe I'm, I'm living in a fantasy land thinking about Josh Allen still. But, um, you know, I, I'm not really going to try to compare it salary cap wise because uh, the Rams have spent a lot of money already. Uh, but, you know, they know and they need something. They can make it work. And uh, and so that that part thing, I think they could make a move for a veteran. If not, it's going to be in the draft. And and then again, you know, with their lack of a move might be telling you that the Rams have a lot of faith, not only in Byron Young, but the development of Nick Hampton and Ochoan Mathis. I mean, they did draft three edge players last year, but I don't think there's anything else really floating around out there. And did you see the contract the Panthers gave J.D. Van Clowney? Would you give that guy two years, 24 rocks and guarantee 20 of it? That's insane. I, 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 I just wouldn't give, I wouldn't give him anything more than one year. Now I know he had one of his better years playing for Baltimore, but Kyle Van Noy had an amazing year. Uh, there's a lot of parts on that. Um, Matabuka, uh, the, the, the DT there, uh, Kyle Hamilton. There's a lot of parts to that Raven defense that makes it easy. Well, makes the job a little bit easier. You still got to go out and get them for uh, some of those other defenders. And I think Clint Clowney cleaned up in Baltimore, and I just wouldn't give him that money in Carolina. Uh, Tim Burns, if we pick an heir apparent for Stafford, who and where? Penix, we discussed, and it's gaining traction. Thoughts? I think I gave those, right? I didn't even look at those questions, man. Yeah, I I think you'd be hard-pressed if you saw Penix at 19. That's like, oh, man, it's, 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 it's a – it's a miserable, wonderful situation. Uh, you know, you want to make sure Stafford is feeling confident. You don't want to do anything to shake that relationship. But Stafford has to know this is the window. Uh, does Stafford want to be part of a rebuild in 2027 or 2026, right? Uh, and uh, and the truth is, is that once Stafford comes off the books, say in two years, just speculating, you'd have Penix. Uh, for for another two and uh, at a at a cutthroat price for a quarterback, and that allows you to keep the Super Bowl window open. Uh, may Matthew Stafford live long and prosper. That's what I want because I have hopes for Penix, but I know what I got in Matthew Stafford, and so yeah, that that is a that's a tricky one right there, real tricky tricky one. Uh, Tim Burns trading up for Odunze. I saw that. It's crazy. No, I wouldn't trade up. I. I don't know, you know, even the defensive tackles, Jerzon Newton, Byron Murphy, even those guys, they're the two hot defensive tackles in this draft. You never see them any further up than about 17 in this draft. And uh, and that's a real Ram need right now. Uh, and, and so uh, I, I wouldn't trade up. You don't have to trade it for that. Do we need an edge rusher? Well, I just talked about Hassan Reddick was drafted 13th overall, and it took him three years to develop. You see Dallas Turner, the Alabama edge, constantly going at number eight uh, to the Falcons. And then after him, you're constantly seeing Jared, Jared Verse out of uh, Florida State go, uh, you know, anywhere from, you know, 15 to, to 12, someplace in there. I did see a recent mock draft that had him falling to the Rams at 19. Uh, I, I, I've never seen him fall that low. But even if you draft those guys and spend the capital, you know, how soon will you reap the rewards? you got to be absolutely sure. So there's nobody I would really want to trade up for, you know. I, I just don't think so. I'd like to see what's coming to me. I'd like to see if I can make a deal with that number one pick to go get Josh Allen. Or, or, or I want to slide back in the draft and accumulate some more picks in a very deep draft. Um, Bill, do you think it was a mistake not getting an edge rusher in free agency you know, we, we talked about that, huh? The names, Daniel Hunter and all these other names we were talking about. 
it might have been a mistake, but I think the Rams know what they're doing and how much they wanted to spend for some of those guys. Uh, some of those guys, you know, the, the Rams have a different thing, right? They want to make sure they got their culture guys. And one of the things that's a little bit different now is you had Aaron Donald, a guy that provided a decade's worth of culture that no one was going to step out of line around, right? You mess around with Aaron Donald uh, and his team, uh, he's going to get in your grill. And so you got to make sure their right locker room fits as well. And so, you know, I fall into a trap. And and maybe if this was – if Jeff Fisher was still here uh, and, you know, Les Steed was maybe still learning his job and it was 2014, 2013 all over again, you know, maybe I would be upset. But there's just this part of me that trusts the McSneed regime that they know what they're doing. Tim Burns, Whitworth turned down announcing uh, the first pick for Sneed, saying he doesn't trust Sneed would keep the pick. <laughs> it's telling. Oh, that's funny. I didn't read that. Where did you read that, Chief? That one's really interesting. Uh, that's really interesting. Uh, that, yeah, okay, that is telling. Good job, Mr. Burns. Uh, Tim Burns, hey, I have lost so much weight. Fit into my Tory Holt home jersey today. Well, good for you if that's good. Did you want to lose weight, Chief? I know we got health issues there. If you're feeling good about your Tory Holt jersey, that's that's awesome. Um, I have a couple jerseys, like my David Archer jersey. I don't look too cool in, so that's why I don't wear my David Archer jersey. Bill, do you think the Rams have any interest uh, at Beckham at the right price? I hope not. I hope not. I, I, you know. He's going to he's gonna demand 10 rocks, right? Eight rocks and even eight rocks. Would you want to pay five rocks for Odell Beckham right now? And uh, I, I, I just wouldn't do it because I think you could draft another receiver. You could draft a receiver in that top 100 and you're going to get the fourth. And then you've got two to Atwell. Okay, so maybe Atwell lost his job to Demarcus Robinson, but Atwell made plays for the Rams last year. So you could draft a receiver in the second or third round, maybe third round. Uh, and somewhere in the first 100 or maybe just outside of it. And then you got a guy that you can develop that maybe can contribute a little bit this year. You have Atwell, who has proven, proved at least last year he could contribute no matter what the naysayers say. And then you got Demarcus Robinson, Cooper Cup, and uh, Puka. And so I just don't see a room there for uh, OBJ, not at the, the rocks he's going to want. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of out on OBJ. Not that I think he's a bad guy. I just don't think there's room for him. Uh, Tim Powers, quote from Nick Nolte from North Dallas 40 to wide receiver coach, always bringing in young competition. And I'm still here. You know, he says that he says that to, uh, to, to, uh, Everett, I think it is. It's, uh, it's Steve Forrest's little brother. I think he's like the assistant GM or something. And, and then, uh, and then Dabney Coleman, who plays the part, he says, do you speak Canadian? Right. Which here was the thing. He's showing him the contract for the new receiver they drafted. It was a little bit, you know, Nick Nolte and not Nick Nolte. The North Dallas 40 people needed to do a little bit better. That scene always bugged me because they're late in the season, right? They're, they're late in the season in the playoff push, and they're talking about their draft picks. And I thought the continuity of that part was bad. Does North Dallas 40 need to be remade? It needs to be remade. But, uh, yeah, Nick Nolte channeling his Fred Bolitnikoff there, you know. You know, do you, you keep running them out there and I'm still here? And and the Dabney Coleman says, do you speak Canadian? Like that's where uh, that's where uh, Phil, Phil Elliott's going to end up. There's some great parts in uh, North Dallas 40 that really hold up well. Uh, but and I, I actually thought Mac Davis looked like Lynn Dickey uh, and uh, he, he didn't do a bad job either. Um, but, yeah, that movie could stand a, a remake and, and stuff. See, interesting there. Tim Powers. Kick rocks, <laughs> Ayuk. Yeah, kick rocks. Hey, but don't you – okay, Mr. Powell, I'm going to answer this here. But don't you want the 49ers to give him a big, fat contract? We got, you know, we got uh, we got Tredavious White and Darius Williams right now, right? We got Quentin Lake, right? We got Kobe Durant ready to bounce back. Uh, and uh, I want the 49ers to give Ayuk his money. Give him his money. Go ahead. Hamstring yourself, right? Because he's not enough of a difference maker. He's really good, and he could sting you, but please, right, John Lynch, give him his money. Give him his props. Give him his flowers, right? You know, because you overpaid for Debo Samuel. Debo Samuel's a really good football player, but he's not an elite receiver. Plus, he's getting old, and he's all banged up, right? And they owe him a lot of money. They still owe Kittle money. And now they're talking about a payday for Brock Purdy. I love it. I love it as the 49er window continues to contract. 
All right, Bill, next Rams player who gets a movie made about him. Uh, if Stetson Bennett comes in and wins a playoff game, he gets a movie made about him. Uh, who else would be uh, a movie made about him? Um, that's a good question, right? Who who gets a movie made about him? You know, I've always advocated the UCLA quarterback John Barnes should have had a movie made about him. Um, man, who gets a movie made about him? Man, that's a really good question. I'm gonna I'm gonna think about that one. If you guys have any ideas, put them down there, and I'll get to you. Okay, we talked about players the Rams have interviewed, right? Braylon Trice, he was in my Madman mock. Jalen Ford, he was in my Madman mock. And, uh, and of course, uh, we know about uh, Ricky Pearsall, Audric Estime, um, Carson Barnett, Michigan, uh, and uh, Mike Sainstro, the corner from Michigan, and Roman Wilson, who was in my mock draft, Troy Fontenot, who was in my mock draft. They've interviewed him. Uh, and a little more on Fontenot was he's 6'4", 317. He was almost exclusively a left tackle for Washington. They say he's great in pass protection, which, you know, you're protecting Penix. He probably is. Uh, and in the middle of last season, he was a third round, projected as a third round selection. But because of the success of the team and the way he played, he moved himself up to the middle of the first round. And that's kind of where he's at now. A high motor, Right and projects uh, as someone that's equipped to play any spot along the offensive line. Does that sound like gold or what? Uh, he said his only problem is he doesn't carry much lower weight, so he's not going to be a great drive blocker. But what do you want in your left tackle? You know, you want your uh, you want your left tackle to be proficient in ballet. You, uh, you, you want your right tackle to be proficient in street brawling. Maybe that changes if your quarterback's left-handed, but right now our quarterback is right-handed. Also, um, taking a ram the Rams taking a tackle in the first round is problematic, okay? Since Orlando Pace in 90, 1997, the Rams have drafted nine tackles in the first 100 of the draft, right? Nine tackles in the first 100 of the draft, uh, three of them in the first round. They've got one home run, Rob Havenstein. Roger Saffold was drafted as a tackle, but didn't make it as a tackle. He made it as a guard. His career, he earned his bread playing guard. And, of course, Joe Noteboom was a third-round selection, I think 97 overall or 89 overall. And uh, he, uh, you know, jury's out on him. But whatever you're going to say, you're not going to consider Joe Noteboom a bust, okay? But who are the other players the Rams drafted in the top 100 of, uh, of the draft since Orlando Pace? that were playing tackle, that were drafted as tackles. Say a bad word here, Bobby Evans. Huh? I'm going to say another bad word here. I'm just going to curse up a storm. Greg Robinson. Yeah, right. Uh, Jason Smith. Yeah. Alex Barron, right? Right. Robinson, Barron, and Smith, all first-round picks, right? Uh, John Greco. You might remember him. John Greco, I think, was drafted with the first pick in the third round. He was like 65th overall or somewhere in that range. And uh, yeah, John Greco, right? John St. Clair in 2000. Yeah, Rams have not done a great job. And uh, even though even Sneed has done a great job, I'm, I'm going to give him credit, obviously, for Havenstein, give him credit for Noteboom. All right. Well, I understand how people feel about Noteboom, but he also drafted Greg Robinson. Okay. So, you know, you could say, hey, we're going to draft that tackle and everything's going to be good. But sometimes things aren't always good, right? Just something to throw out there. Charles Davis's mock draft 2.0. Uh, Charles Davis did a mock draft uh, at the beginning of March. I'm trying to look it up here real quick. Yeah, in that draft on March 6, his first mock draft, his, he had the Rams taking the UCLA edge, Latu Latu, uh, at the 19th overall pick. Uh, Latu keeps moving up the board. I actually saw Latu going at 10 in one mock draft recently. So Charles Davis mock draft starts out this way. He's got Caleb Williams going to the Bears. He's got Drake May going to the Tax Skins and Jaden Daniels going to the Patriots. He has the Cardinals holding on to Marvin Harrison. He has the Bolts not trading out of the fifth spot, not drafting Joe Alt, but drafting LSU's Malik Neighbors uh, to give a, a weapon, obviously, to... Um, to uh, Justin Herbert. Maybe they don't believe in Quinton Johnson and Joshua Palmer. At number six, Romo Dunze to the Giants. Number seven, Alt to the Titans. Number eight, Dallas Turner to the Falcons. Number nine, here's the mock draft. 
Latu Latu, UCLA, going to the Bears at number nine. Brock Purdy going to the Jets at 10. J.J. McCarthy, two days ago, he was a third-round selection. Uh, and uh, today, he's a, not a third-round selection, third overall selection. Today, he's the Vikings pick at number 11, J.J. McCarthy. Uh, Broncos at number 12 take Quinion Mitchell. Remember in the days when Quinion Mitchell was a target for the Rams and then he played so well? in all these different uh, senior bowl and, and, and uh, combine stuff that he kind of moved out of the Rams price range. Uh, number 13, Talisi Fuaga. Uh, number 14, Olam Fashino. I'm sorry, Fuaga going to the Raiders. Fashino, the Penn State guy, going to the Saints. Cooper DeGene, uh, the, the Iowa guy, going to the Colts at 15. Now, this, this uh, Charles Davis draft has Michael Penix going to the Seahawks at number 16. Former Washington Husky coordinator, I think, is there now. It's right there in his backyard. Penix stays home at number 16, going to the Seahawks. And why the Seahawks aren't in talks, I have to see them drafting a quarterback. I just do. I don't see them drafting a tackle. Jaguars taking Byron Murphy at number 17, Texas DT. Bengals at number 18, taking Jerzon Johnny Newton at number 18 uh, from, uh, yeah, from um, Illinois. And then Charles Davis has the Rams at number 19, drum roll please, taking Bo Nix. That is incredibly jejun. Yes, it is. It feels jejun, doesn't it? I like Charles Davis. Now, Daniel Jeremiah had, or Bucky Brooks had the Rams taking Bo Nix back in January, right? Before the playoffs really were even over. You know, first week had already begun. And uh, I just don't see the Rams taking Bo Nix, I guess. Uh, you know, I think I'd be more tempted for Michael Penix than Bo Nix. But, uh, yeah, they have the Rams taking Bo Nix at number 19. Jackson Powers Johnson going to the Steelers at 20. Jared Verse dropping the 21 to the Dolphins. Jason Latham, Alabama tackle going to the Eagles at 22. Terry and Arnold going to the Vikings at number 23. Fontenot going to the Cowboys at number 24. Uh, Nate Wiggins, Clemson corner, going to the Packers at 25. Kool-Aid McKinstry going to the Bucks at 26. Zach Frazier, West Virginia, center guard, going to the Cardinals at 27. That's a good pick for the Cards. Brian Thomas going to the Bills. That's the LSU receiver. Brandon Fisk, DT, um, uh, Florida State, going to the Lions at 29. Enos Rakestraw, a corner, going to the Ravens at 30. Uh, Tyler Guyton, Oklahoma tackle, going to the 49ers at 31. Amarius Mims. With only eight career starts going to the Chiefs at number 32. Marius Mims, even though he's a giant, he's like a product of the Nephilim, right? You know, um, I just don't see he's a red flag for me. Eight starts and he's coming into the NFL makes me nervous. So we've looked at 23 mock drafts outside the house, not just our people, you and me, but you know, other people in the media. We've looked at 23 mock drafts. Six of them have Latu going to the Rams, three. Uh, Jerzon Newton, and then Bo Nix, Nate Wiggins, Talise Fuaga, uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry, Quinion Mitchell, Jackson Powers Johnson. Uh, these guys are being projected to the Rams. Two have projected those guys to the Rams. All right. Um, moving on here, looking at the schedule. We talked about the schedule being released probably second week, March 8th, May 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th. Whatever the NFL can do to get a good, uh, get a good viewing audience. That's when they'll do the schedule release. We know who the teams we're playing are. We just don't know when we're playing them, right? Uh, Hassan Reddick had 13 sacks for the Eagles, and the Rams are playing the Eagles to next year again in SoFi. And he had 13 sacks last year, but now he's taking those to the Jets. Uh, Eagles have four picks in the top 100 this year, number 22, 50, 54, and 97. They're projected at 10.5 wins by Vegas. Free agent additions, Saquon Barkley, Devin White, <clears throat> the former Tampa Bay guy, uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson coming back from Detroit. Bryce Huff, we talked about. Devontae Parker from the um, from the from the Patriots as a free agent. Extensions, and they kept uh, they extended Landon Dickerson, and they extend and they brought back Brandon Graham, uh, Jason Kelsey, and Fletcher Cox have retired. Uh, free agency they lost Kevin Byard, uh, safety, who they made a deal for. And the one that's really interesting is the right tackle, Lane Johnson, didn't retire. And that was an expectation. When I kind of, you know, trying to guesstimate where they're going to be, I think they were going to take a step back. And maybe they still will, but I anticipated Lane Johnson retiring at right tackle, and he's not. And so he pairs with Jordan uh, Meliata, 
They're six eight giant at left tackle, and it really gives Philly the two best bookends at tackle uh, in the NFC, uh, at least the NFC, if not the NFL. And so they're going to be formidable there. And then you got AJ Brown, Devonta Smith, you know Parker, and Dallas Goddard at tight end. So and then Saquon Barkley at running back. So you know it really feels like the the Eagles have loaded up, and it comes down to Jalen Hurts. And I like Jalen Hurts. But you saw Jalen Hurts against the Rams last year. Yeah, he's okay, but I'm not all in on him. And this will sound crazy in light of my madman mock that I posted. Um, Hurts is below 50 rocks because they extended him early. Good job by the Eagles for doing that. They extended him early. And I think for the next three years, I think the highest he makes is 48. That's bargain basement for a starting quarterback, especially one that took you to the Super Bowl. So my feeling is instead of risking a – Another year that maybe he stays where he was at last year or maybe has a little dip or maybe an injury clicks in because it was obvious last year you're watching him play. He looked like he was hurt. And I don't think his arm talent is enough to where it's going to allow him not to run. He needs to run. But, boy, he was a lot less dynamic last year. So my feeling is if you're the Eagles, you got your offensive line, uh, you made your moves, you know, you could still stand a corner, Maybe an interior guy. I get it, right? Um, but if you're the Eagles, if you think about it, if you could do it, if you could do it, why not move Jalen Hurts now? Get something good for him and then reset the contract clock at quarterback, right? So you're saving money and you're staying relevant going forward. Um, because if Hurts has another season like he did in 2023, no matter how much he's loved in Philly now, they're going to tear him apart, and his value is going to drop. The Eagles, uh, of course, have the Taxkins, Cowboys, Giants at home and on the road. At home this year, they get the Falcons, Panthers, Browns, Steelers, Packers, and uh, Panthers, Packers, and Jaguars. And then away, they uh, get the Bengals, Ravens, Saints, Buccaneers, and Rams. That is not, not an easy schedule. If Hurts resets and Nick Sirianni avoids any kind of a meltdown, which he seemed like he was on the precipice of last year, the Eagles are going to be a good team. Um, if not, I think it will be a real struggle for them to get 10 wins. I think the Cowboys are going to be bad. You don't know about the Giants, Skins. It's going to take a year. So they're going to have the advantage of playing in a bad division. But they're playing some tough opponents, right? Rams are going to be tough. Bengals are going to be tough. Browns are tough. Steelers are tough. Packers are tough. Jaguars should bounce back. And so could be a rough year uh, in Philly or maybe just not the year they wanted. Okay, on this date in Rams history, the Rams, believe it or not, traded former number one draft pick Kevin Carter uh, in 2001 to the Titans for uh, a first-round pick, a 29th overall pick, who turned into Ryan Pickett. Now, I don't want to break this down too much because I think I have before. If you think about this, it was on this date the Rams did that 23 years ago. Ryan Pickett was okay for the Rams. He was better than Jimmy Kennedy. He was better than Damian Lewis. Uh, but he was a real consistent performer for the Packers for a number of years, for several years. He played his four years for the Rams, was okay his, his last year, and then he moved on as a free agent. But uh, Kevin Carter, uh, after he left the Rams and went to Tennessee, he was ordinary. You know, he had that extraordinary 17 sack season in 1999. And in some ways, the move was good by the Rams. You got a first round pick for Kevin Carter, but. The execution of it probably wasn't. We should look back and see who the Rams could have drafted in 2001 and maybe take a look at that. I mentioned Jim Benton uh, at the top of the show when I talked about how the Rams have won four titles and key touchdown passes were critical to them winning every one of those games. And the one I mentioned was Jim Benton, and he passed away on this day in, in uh, 2001. He was 84. Um, he was drafted in the second round, 11th overall in 1938 out of Texas. He spent eight seasons with the Rams. He spent 1943 with the Bears, but the Rams suspended operations that season because of the war. Uh, but Benton was like the Rams Cooper Cup in the 1940s, his biggest seasons coming in 1945 and 46. His numbers, if you look at this, with the Cleveland Rams, that title season in 1945, he caught 45 passes for 1,067 yards, eight touchdowns, 23.7 yards per catch, right? He caught 63 passes the following year. So, yeah, he was the Cooper Cup of the, 
of the 1940s for the Rams. Just something you wanted to throw in there that I think uh, I thought you guys would like to be aware of. Uh, tomorrow, March 30th, since we're not going to be on the air, I did want to mention this. Uh, the, in in uh, 1976, on March 30th, the NFL had its expansion draft. They were adding the Seattle Seahawks and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to the NFL. I was excited about new teams coming in. I was excited about the Buccaneers because, you know, John McKay was going to be the head coach and he was signing every former USC player around. So that was all, all kind of exciting. But what I wasn't aware of was this expansion draft. And I remember that expansion draft and, uh, and the Rams lost a starting corner, Ken McMillan, and then a starting outside linebacker, Ken Geddes, to the Seattle Seahawks, Jack Patera's team. And uh, they lost Willie McGee, who had been a kick returner, uh, to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, McGee's impact on the Rams was minimal, but Eddie McMillan was a fourth-round pick in 73. He became a starter. Now, he wasn't outstanding, but when you think that what the Rams had in draft picks at that time um, – you know, they, they had just taken Monty Jackson. They were believing in him. In 76, uh, they drafted uh, Pat Thomas. And so McMillan's loss wasn't um, hypercritical, as uh, you might think, but he was a starter. And then Ken Geddes is another one. Outside linebackers. You know, the, the Rams were running, uh, you know, they were running Geddes, Jack Reynolds, and uh, Isaiah Robertson. But they were really high on, of course, Jim Youngblood. And then Rick K. No one remembers Rick K. But Rick K. was a guy who was an undrafted free agent out of uh, Colorado, and he had a couple of opportunities where he started for the Rams, but knee injuries short circuited his career. But I was really upset when Ken Geddes. It's like who the blank is the expansion draft, right? I was uh, pretty prolific in my blank talk back in then, in the in the seventies. March 31st, Easter Sunday. I just want to mention this one real quick, and we'll get back uh, to if you guys have any questions. On, on, on March 31st, 1971, the Rams traded Tommy Mason. He was a George Allen special the Rams dealt for in the late 60s to kind of round out the roster. They dealt for him from the Vikings. Uh, and so they had him for a couple of years. But after 1970, George Allen went to the Taxkins or the Redskins at that time. And, uh, of course, we know about the, the Ramskins trade. That, that brought that huge deal, but he kept picking up players and on a side deal in March 31st and 71 before the 71 season, uh, the Redskins sent a fifth round pick to the Rams for Tommy Mason. Mason didn't do anything, but the Rams got a decade's worth out of that guy, that draft pick out of San Jose state fifth round 129 overall. Do you know what his name is? His name was Cody Jones. Now Cody Jones, you know, was not Larry Brooks. He was not Merlin Olson, but he made a Pro Bowl, and uh, he was a very competent uh, inside DT for the Rams, along with Mike Fanning. Who did, they didn't get all the glory, but they did a solid job for a decade with the Rams, and I just felt like we needed to acknowledge Cody Jones today on Ramview. There we go. All right. I think it was. I'm going to do it. It was. It was a stone group, my man. All right. There we go. Um, let's see here. Tim Burns. Adding to the names that shan't be uttered, Elvis Patterson, Toast, so frustrating. But didn't he didn't he get that reputation with the Giants and the Raiders, uh, Mr. Burns? Uh, Tim Powers, Stedman Bailey, yeah, I got shot, right? He got shot. You know, he actually probably contributed as much as Tavon Austin, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, Stedman Bailey, yeah, that's a pretty good one. Uh, Bill, Daryl Henley, tragic story would make a good movie. Yeah, but is there a happy ending there, right? So as someone who, who who has written about seven books now, can I just tell you, I get beaten up by people when I don't give a happy ending. Uh, and so I had to modify. Book sales go up when you have a happy ending. I think uh, movie sales go up when you have a happy ending. And uh, so I don't know if Daryl Henley ends well. Manuel Correa, how's it going? Mr. Correa uh, is, uh, is uh, I'm waiting for your mock draft, man. You said you're going to send me a mock draft. We'll go right to you. Uh, Korea, it's looking like Chop Robinson or ba Braylon Trice. He's a beast. It's interesting, but people are, are are going both ways on Chop Robinson. Sometimes he's first round, sometimes he's not. Braylon Trice seems to be mid-second round or early third, and uh, I, I wouldn't have a problem with Braylon Trice. I, I kind of like him, uh, but the thing is, where where do you draft him? You don't want to – if you can get him at 83, I definitely don't want to draft him at 52. 
I don't think 83, he's still going to be around, but it is something to think about there. Tim Burns, Eagles fan isn't patient and they booed Santa. So did you like my idea about them maybe moving uh, Jalen Hurts now, or is that too much of a madman thought? Uh, appreciate the, think the thinking there. Tim Burns, 2001 picket. We could have had Reggie Wayne or Drew Brees. Ouch. Uh, you know, think about Reggie Wayne coming in at that time in 2001 when you got you got Holt, you got Bruce, you got Ricky Prohl, you still had Oz Akeem, you still had Horn. Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm all for it, but I, I, I can see where they would have passed on him. Uh, Drew Brees, you still had Kurt Warner in his prime. Uh, and given Drew Brees' slight build and, and that Mart's offense, where it seems like he left nobody in to help the quarterback, uh, you know, he got, I feel like he got Mark Bolger killed um, and, and, and such. Bolger, see, there's a guy we got to do a piece on, is I think if Bolger had been someplace other than the Rams, especially after Mart's left, his career would have turned out differently. Uh, Manuel Correa. Oh, there you go. Rod Perry, don't forget. I knew I was. I knew I was forgetting something when I said when I said the Rams were going to draft Pat Thomas. They already had Monty Jackson and they had Rod Perry, thanks to the 1975 draft. See, there you go. Mr. Korea calling me out. Good job. Good job. Okay, guys, uh, I think we're good. If somebody has anything they want to throw my way, I'll stick here for about a minute and then we'll go. Uh, we'll be back on, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We are going to try to stay in that 5 o'clock slot. Um, and, uh, and we'll go from there. And if you have any questions, I'll type in my email uh, one more time for you guys. Uh, if you have a mock draft you want to send me or questions you want me to read, uh, I haven't had anything from SA Bob for a while and uh, THX1138. Uh, but uh, if they've got something, if you're out there, guys, send it to me and uh, I'll be glad to read it on the air. All right. Uh, I think we're good. I think, yeah, I think we are good. Let me see here. Uh, what, what did I want to hit on real quick? Um, in this last second here, uh, today's date. Um, actually, no, you know, uh, tomorrow is the anniversary of the Rams signing Kurt Warner, not Kurt Warner, but Kurt Warner, the running back in 1990. Remember they let, uh, they let, uh, um, Oh my goodness. Now my mind's they let Greg Bell walk and uh, they brought in Kurt Warner. He didn't last the season. Uh, born tomorrow on March 30th is Dave Chappell. Anyone remember Dave Chappell? 10th round pick by the, by the 49ers. Started kicking for Buffalo in 71. Kind of a journeyman guy. And then he becomes an all pro, becomes a pro bowler in 1972 for the Rams. He was solid in 73, horrible in 74, and was cut after six games. Uh, but yeah, uh, it'll be uh, 77th birthday tomorrow for Dave Chapel, And uh, I think we got it. Oh, bad story. Maybe I shouldn't mention it here. But March 31st, uh, that'll be the anniversary, the 10-year anniversary of the Rams signing Sean Hill as a backup quarterback. <laughs> there you go. All right, guys. You guys have a nice weekend, too. Thank you so much for hanging out. Uh, and uh, we will be back. And thank you all for everyone that has signed up. Have a great weekend. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. God bless.